Now, I want you to remember a card, just not the bottom one. All right, you got one memorized? No? All right, one more time. Hopefully you got one memorized by now. So hopefully it wasn't the top card, right? This is not the card you memorized, the Four of Clubs. No, okay, it wasn't this Two of Diamonds, right? I told you not to memorize that one. So it wasn't the Two of Diamonds or the Four of Clubs, okay. Um, here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try this out, try this out one time. If I just go through the cards now, go through all the faces, we'll see that one card is reversed and that one card is your selected card, the Seven of Clubs. What up crew, it is Magic Monday and this is your place to learn magic, master your performance and captivate audiences. Today I'm gonna to be showing you a card trick that I already showed you. Okay everybody, so welcome to the tutorial. Just a little bit of background on this effect. This is something I actually came up with by pulling up concepts from uh, here and there. And the reason I like it so much is because it's not too difficult to do and it'll practically fool any layman. So with that being said, let's go ahead and break it down. So first thing you wanna do is take the deck out of the tuck case, then hand it over to the spectator to give it a shuffle. And this will just improve or increase the impact at the end of the trick. Once they're satisfied with the shuffle, what you'll really be doing is forcing the top card onto the spectator, okay? So, and you could do this in whatever method you like. Um, I like to riffle through and have a spectator look and think or you know, remember one card when in fact, what actually happened during my performance is I riffled through and I just held the top card a little bit longer than the rest of the deck. So we have the Ace of Hearts on top. So when I'm riffling, I just held the top card just a half a millisecond longer than the rest of the cards. So this way they take a look and remember that one, okay? And the way that I would perform this, right? This is similar to how I performed it for you guys is I took the deck of cards, once it's shuffled, I tell the spectator, I hold the deck up to their face, show them the bottom card, tell them I'm gonna riffle through the deck and I want you to remember a card, but not the bottom one. The first, the first time I riffle through, it's really fast, really quick. This way they don't see any card aside from you know the, the bottom card itself. So they usually say, wait, can you do that again? Or I ask, uh, do you have a card memorized? They say no. And the second time I go through, and that's when I stop a little bit longer on the top card. And the reason I do this is because the first time, right, when I do it really quick, um, their attention isn't there. They're not looking very closely. They're thinking, oh, I have plenty of time to think and remember a card. But the second time when I do it now, they will really just grab on to the first card they see because they think they may not see another card if it's going, if the riffle goes any faster. So the first card that they can see clearly is the card that they'll remember. And in our case, since we're going through the rest of the deck fairly quickly and we stop half a millisecond on that last card, that is the card that they're going to remember. So real quick, the technique behind that, you wanna kinda of angle the deck like this. So the top part is out a little bit in the front here. This way, when you're riffling through like this, it'll be easier to stop there. Okay, and one thing you may wanna realize, or one more, one thing you may notice, is that the first notch on my index finger here is where that top card is held, right? So as I'm riffling through like this, it takes a bit longer for the card to come out of this, this crevice or this crease, whatever you wanna call it, of my finger. So that's why it makes it a little bit easier to hold the top card in there for a little bit longer. So that's just a tip that can help you um, with this move. Man, I spent a lot of time on that. But anyway, once the top card is memorized, of course, the spectator doesn't know it's a top card. They think it's a random card in the deck. Then I'm doing this in their face, right? And then as I'm pulling the deck back, I wanna grab a pinky break under the top two cards, okay? So I do this just in the cover of bringing the deck back. You can uh, count with your thumb, you can do a pinky count, whatever method you like. But now you're going to do a double lift, right? So you do your double lift and as a spectator, it's not the top card, right? You didn't, you didn't think of the top card. They're gonna say, they immediately look at this card and be like, that, that's not my card, so it can't be the top card. They immediately look at this card like, no, that, that's not my card, it's not the top card. Then I show them the bottom, again, just telling them that, remember, you should not have picked this card, okay? And in the cover of me doing this, I'm taking this top card out, or, you know, this top card out, originally the second card from the top, taking this out, and I show them, so you didn't think of this card, I mean, you're, you didn't remember this card, didn't remember this card, okay? So, and I show them both of these cards, and now as I'm putting this back, I put it back on top facing the direction of the rest of the deck, right? So boom, facing the direction of the rest of the deck. Just like this, right? So you show them 
you didn't pick any of these cards and then you put this right back on top. And fun fact, I believe this move is called the reverse double lift, right? So one more time, quick recap. You do that riffle, they remember the ace of hearts. Of course, they don't know that it's on top. Then you do a double lift, you show them the six of clubs and here's the reverse double lift. You turn the deck upside down, take this card out, but the way, of course, I don't do it this way, I do it this way. Take the card out, display like this, put it back on top, and that's actually the reverse double lift. Okay, and this is where we had left off. You can just give the deck a cut. You can even hand the deck over to the spectator and snap or do some kind of magic wave, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, the reveal is completely up to you. Just do whatever works best, whatever you enjoy the most, okay? And the way that I like to do the reveal at the end is I like to spread through, showing all the cards are facing the same direction except one card, and I push that card out towards the spectator. There we go, all the cards are facing up. I continue going through the rest of the deck, and then I, the spectator, I want the spectator to pull it out, and they see, there it is, their selected card, the one that they just thought of and remembered, right? You had, well, they believe you had no actual influence. There's no way you could have known what that card is. And there is that card, reversed in the deck, the Ace of Hearts. Now, if you guys enjoyed this effect, make sure to like and subscribe and stick with me till the end for the quote of the week. So the quote of the week, this one is by Bonnie Blair. She says, winning doesn't always mean being first. Winning means doing better than what you've done before. All right, guys, peace out. And then check out this video, right? Once you've done, you've been pieced out, then, then check out this video.